everyone, Asian Fluffy here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy, Phoenix Wright Justice for All, The Lost Turnabout, Part 2. Alright, so, uh, let's have the baseball glove in the court record. Officer Bridge really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had to special order it? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court is enough. It's clear the victim and the defense were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that's true, it brings up an important question. Was it a Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the bat. On the. Oh. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sure. Writing on the ground, witness testimony, writing on the ground. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote his name with his right hand. Mm, yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. All right, Miss Strike, you may cross them to witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Cross examination, writing on the ground. But can you really determine the handwriting based on a sample written on the sand? Heh! <laughs> this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So, what was the result of the investigation? So, in the end, you couldn't confirm it? Hey, don't you look down on us! I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I never heard that before. Me neither. Nor I. I never heard anything like that in the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. Anyway. <sighs> Water. His pointer finger? You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces. <laughs> Don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. In any case, you examine the victims and dicks. What the fuck? I don't know what... Okay! In any case, you examine the victim's index finger, correct? Yeah, we figured there should be something on his finger if he had been writing the sand. And the results? And what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write that name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. Scratches on his skin? Yup, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That's incredible! Sure is. That's the power of scientific investigation. They're so small that we had to use magnifying glasses. Like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those and that's how we found them. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. Are you absolutely sure? I believe in the power of science. Hmm. I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. 
Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. That the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? If Dustin really wrote that message with the right hand, do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? A present? What about it? Ah. Here it is. Detect a gumshoe. Take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Uh, never really thought about it, but, uh... It's really yellow. And that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow. But that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? And... Oh my god, what is going... Skype, shut the fuck up. I don't want your notifications. I'm like, I've already signed in to fucking Skype. Holy god damn it. Okay. Anyway. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. The glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That's why it had to be custom made. I had never seen a bright yellow left-handers glove for sale, have you? Well, uh, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious in this picture it was his... Uh, whoa, 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 wait a sec. Ah, finger. Ow. I, <laughs> my finger hurts, but yeah. Ow. Anyway. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah, ah! That's it. That is. I mean, I... I'm shit! Overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your lie of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order, order. What do you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is... No. It's not possible! Mr. Payne? Y yes Your Honor? The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! All right, you did it, Mr. Wright! Whew, I feel like I can breathe again. I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached a conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Uh, well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being the lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. I don't know what else my verdict. This court fights defendant Mikey Bird. No, not yet! I mean, please, give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What, what, what is we do this, Miss Payne? The, prosecu the prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? Oh, shit. And what is this witness? Is? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Oh, shit. Order, order the court. I believe the recess is in order. Afterward, we'll hear from this new witness. I had a feeling this was a bit too easy. 
I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. Can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Of course, enjoy for recess. Okay, all right. Say so your progress up to this point? Yes, indeed. There you go. September 8th, 11.43 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Uh, amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I... Uh, Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kit should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! I, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course! I'd be honored to! Uh, well, I guess I'll start my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright? What a weird name. This is serious. I really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back, and maybe it'll help. Huh? This is a business card? I got this for you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There's some numbers written on the back. Oh, as your cell phone number. Phoenix business card added to the court record. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. I guess for now we should stop talking about me. And start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um... I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talk about it, talked about it at the detention center, sir. Huh? Hurry up then, tell me. That might be very important. Okay, Roger. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone when I was on a walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Well, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can get this back. I'll be right there. Um, I I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is it that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I... I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all alone! You were so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left! Eh, now who the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie! And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, 
And what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right! It's Maya to the rescue with the ultimate decisive super important evidence! Here you are, Nick! The thing you wanted me to bring! Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. A list of unfamiliar names and phone numbers. Members of a con artist group? Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday! Oh, is that right? These numbers are in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Yes, you had to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Well, wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. September 8th, 11.54 a.m. District Court, Court Number 2. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witnesses, Sam, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. She has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I guess the court might be a little lenient on... There's no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls his next witness a drifter who has taken a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Please state your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, all right, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who has taken a walk. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student, but blah 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 blah. I can't fucking read what I'm saying here. Okay, make a selection process. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. What is he? A human shadow box? Uh to question him? Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Glasses? But you weren't wearing glasses. That's enough. You're a witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep young people down. Well, I see how you work now. You old people in your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right. I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Ahem. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a, uh, strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on the walk with mommy. And you must know I don't... Anyway, please testify in the court when you saw during the walk, your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know, you... What you witness will do, Mr. Wellington? 
Jeez. When this testimony, when I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer fell from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was a banana that fell off of the police officer. The only other thing I saw was a banana that fell with a police officer. Mm, that was certainly decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you had to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. And if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying! Oh yeah. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Cross-examination, what I saw that day. So you were at the park all afternoon? You seem to have a lot of free time. Hm. That was very rude of you. But then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. Uh, no-name? Trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mushhead, feeble-minded baboon like you, but... I had to think very carefully about the future of our great country. I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. That arrogant little snot. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. This arrogance is really intolerable. What should I do now? Press harder. Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? I can't believe I had to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam... You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. <laughs> I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Did you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Oh, oh, so it is. I looked at that clock, and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole break of the parts, oh, it's total nonsense. Blah, 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 blah. I can't fucking read what it says, because it's too fucking fast. Yeah, again, another flood of meaningless words. Talking about a first class waste of time. In any case, this is about, it's pretty much as bad as freaking uh, <sighs> Wendy Old Bag. My god. And how did you know he was a police officer? You obviously have no idea how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That shoddy do-it-yourself hairstyle, blah 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 blah. I suppose he was wearing... Oh, and I suppose it was also because he was wearing the officer's uniform. Shouldn't that statement ever come first? Oh, that's pretty impressive. 
Hey, Nick. Do you think you've figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured that out yet. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Right. They use this eye to see things. In this case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. I don't care if I have it or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? Attention! That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Right not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustained. Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court, and what is good? Okay. I got a notification. Then please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are you finished? I'd like to continue, if that's alright with you. So you sure you are not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful tray wreck of a life with mine. I'm what you call a famous brand name product, while you're only a cheap imitation. Ooh, that fucking bird. Oh, this guy is starting to get into my nerves. There is no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh ho ho ho, of course. Did you know there's anything else of interest with this? The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm, he could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else? If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. He'd been extinct. If my client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he said he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying... Yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but I ju just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? Alrighty, I am going to stop right here. I am going to save my progress right here and continue on pretty much part three of Phoenix Wright Justice for All. The Lost Turnabout. And yeah, this has been Agent Fluffy, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hey everyone, Agent Fluffy here, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me even more, feel free to support my Patreon. The links are right here.